All right guys, so now that our general plan is set here for this, it's time to start taking some stuff apart and getting rid of some of those seam lines I mentioned earlier. So with these booster parts, especially, we've got some seam lines to get rid of here. So let me just get these off. All right, so first up, uh, this part here, now we are gonna need some color separation, but luckily the way that these parts go together, uh, getting rid of the seam line shouldn't cause us too much trouble here. So I'm just gonna use my trusty wave part separator here and get these back apart. There you go. So these little yellow bits here actually just plug in once the whole thing is all put together. So those are easy enough and just pop those out. And then this lighter blue part here on the front also just goes in later so that we can just pop out. That can just be put on after the everything's assembled. We go if I can get that out. There we go. All right. So the only part that's going to be a problem is this little yellow piece here, which fits down into here. So it's got these two little small tabs there on the side that you can see there and basically those are going to be the problem of what's going to be keeping us from being able to just put these in so so these two parts here will go together we'll need to remove the seam line around on here but those are going to then close this yellow piece into place but as you can see it's basically just going along the side there so i think what we can do with this pretty easily is just cut off those little tabs on the side and then this has a little hole there where that plugs onto this tiny little peg inside here. So once these parts are together and glued like that, we can just cut off the little tabs on the side of this yellow part because we don't actually really particularly need those. All right, there we go. So those will like help make sure the part stays in place, but we don't really particularly need that. Once the kid is painting everything, we can just glue this down in place. So we don't really need that extra security. That should just then pop down into there like that. And it actually works out just fine. So should be able to get rid of the seams on these parts without having to worry about anything. That's pretty simple. Now, as for the shield parts, these are a little bit different. These are just also have these two parts inside there, but let's go ahead and pop this one apart as well. All right, and once again, this blue part goes on last, so that's easy enough to just put on, but it's this yellow part that you're supposed to put on first before you close this up, but there's nothing really holding it in place there. There's nothing really blocking it with this piece. So I think we should be able to put that in once these parts are put together. So I'll take that out for now and then just we're just testing this and not gluing it yet. But say, for example, we're going to get rid of the seam line around on these parts. That's going to just going to be like that. And then we should be able to just pop this in there from above. Once the parts are glued and painted and everything, just pop that down into there like that. And then the blue piece over the top of that as well. So yeah, shouldn't be an issue at all. All right, good. So we can get rid of the seam lines on those parts, no problem. There's one little seam here on the back of the head as well, which I'm going to just turn into a panel line. Just gonna scribe the edge of that to turn that into a panel line. And then a seam line here on these weapons parts. But again, pretty simple, just glue and remove that just as a normal seam line. So uh, these new parts, the weapons parts, and these booster parts need to be sanded down just so we get a nice good surface on there, remove the seam lines and everything. But as I mentioned in the last video, we are going to also try out this new tool here from Godhand. This is the uh, spin mold. So this is just a set of, let's see, one millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, two millimeter, 2.5 millimeter, and a three millimeter holes that you can make here with this. So they had a previous version of this, but what's different about this new version is that it now has a tiny little pin in the center of it so that you can really uh, make sure that you have the exact point that you want. So as you can maybe see that from the illustration, it'll make a tiny pinhole in the center as well. And so from this illustration, you can see a normal drill makes a sort of uh, not a flat uh, base there at the core of where you're drilling. It'll be like kind of drill shape there, obviously. But what this one does is it just makes a flat circular shape there at the bottom. So then you can set your photo etch circular detail part down into that uh, perfectly flat. So that's nice. Um, just here on the back, just another illustration illustrating that point. So as you can see, it'll just work a little bit nicer for that. So. As it's showing, you can also double up by making one hole and then a smaller hole inside of that to make another cool just little detail like that. I mean, you don't have to also put photo etch parts into this. You can just drill just a hole like that just to make just a circular detail. But we're going to put some photo etch parts, I think, in some of these parts. But uh, you can just make use this just to make little circular details like that. Now, this set is pretty expensive, I'll admit, but it does seem to be very useful, I think, for adding details onto stuff. So. You go, you got this and just in this nice plastic case and just opens up. And so you will need a uh, just a drill for this. So let's get out some tools here. I've got my drill bit stuff over here. So any sort of drill that will just be able to hold up to three millimeters 
should work for you for this. So there's a, a ton of them out there and you sort of just drill handle uh, like this. Uh, and I'm just now noticing that actually all of these all use the same size, which is pretty convenient. You don't have to actually switch any parts here on the drill itself. It just needs to be the one that's meant for three millimeter because these are all, the base is all three millimeters for these. So you can just swap that out without having to swap any parts on your drill. That's nice. So let's just pull out the uh, one, two millimeter. These also are marked on there. It does say two millimeter on there. So you can ma make sure that you're never confused about that. Let me just pull out a scrap piece of plastic here just to test this on. So you're just going to pop this down and again there's a tiny little uh, pin point there on the top so you want to make sure you're really careful with that so I'm sure that'll probably break off kind of easily so you're just going to press that in there to get your center point and then just drill that out slowly and there we go very nice just precisely drilled hole there for that so looks good I think these are going to work out really nicely now we need to plan out where we're going to actually use this on our kit we're working on here the frame arms kit all right, now some of those parts are just dissembled. We got some glue on these parts over here drying, so we'll wait and sand up those. But one thing that I wanna work on here on the legs as well, you've got these hard points on the inside and outside of the leg that we just don't really need there. I could just leave them as they are, but we're gonna go ahead and plug these up. So we're gonna use these Wave O-Bolt o -bolt 2 parts here. These once again, just being little bolt parts available in different sizes. So we're gonna use the three millimeter bolts here. I need four of those to just pop into these holes here. Now, these usually are pretty tight to pop in there, but let's see if we can just drop this in in place and try not to drop it. There we go. Now I could press that down in there a little bit farther, but I want it to be sticking out just a little bit like that. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue, dot that around there. It's really tight, so I'm sure it's not going anywhere, but just in case, we'll just put a little glue around that anyway. Repeat that for both sides on both legs. All right, then we've got this little part here, which is just gonna sit on top of the rifle. So it's kind of on the top and on the back and of that like that. And so what I wanna do is make this into like cameras on here. They had a little tiny circular detail there on the front, but it was also just in the middle of a mold line there. So it's just kind of a pain in the ass. So just got rid of that, sanded that down. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the spin jabbies here. And then also these wave parts here. These are HI's three mini. These are the smallest size. These come in three different sizes. Uh, these range from one millimeter to 2.8 millimeter on this mini size. And so we're gonna use the 2.5 millimeters here. Not right now. We're just gonna take our 2.5 millimeter uh, spin mold. That's what it is, sorry, I can't, can't remember the name of this. And we're just gonna put two holes in here for now with this. And then later, once it is all painted and everything, we can drop these clear parts, these clear lens parts into there for lenses for the camera. And there we go, our two little circles in there, a little dusty, but we'll brush that out later. So that's set. Now as for where I wanna place photo etch parts, I'm thinking to put these on the shields. Now, because of just the way that the design is, I don't think that it's too susceptible to putting a bunch of circles on it everywhere, because it's a very angular, kind of sharp design. So I don't wanna break up a lot of the detail that's there with just adding a bunch of circulars around for no reason. But on the shields, I think I can do something cool with these by just adding a couple of just like, circular bolt details so it looks like it's like a really thick piece of like plate armor that's like you know pieces like bolted together so i think we can go in and add probably a couple of circular big giant bolt details on here so i think basically what i want to do is just put them down here like here and here and then maybe one up here as well so i don't know if you guys can really see that very well on second thought, uh, no bolt there at the front. I think we'll just do two. I wanted to do enough, but again, don't want to force it. So I think for now, we'll just stick with just the two here in this spot like that. I think that should look pretty good. So uh, let's get our photo etch parts, see what we've got here. Hmm, I think these will work pretty good. These are AW019. These are just photo etch parts. These are available at US Gundam Store, by the way. Uh, but yeah, these are just some little details that you can use for different stuff. You don't need to cut anything, you just peel them off here and stick them down. You do need to use a little bit of glue though, so you just drill the holes first. Go ahead and actually measure those out. So let me just get this here. 
I'm using the 2.5 bit and then the photo etch parts that I'm gonna set inside there are just two millimeters, so there's gonna be a little bit of gap in between them. I mean, alternatively, you could just stick the photo etch part directly onto there and not actually bore any circular hole that I'm doing here. It's just for a different detail. All right, there we go. That is all done. Those are looking good. One side and the other side like that. They're looking like they match. So uh, let's get these photo etch parts set in there. Now I really don't need a lot of super glue at all, so I just put a drop there on my thumb and I'm just going to use a toothpick to just put a tiny little bit of super glue into there. A tiny little droplet into there, like that. And take our tweezers to peel off the photo etch part here off the film. And voila! There we go. Now just to repeat, now I'm not really too worried about the orientation of this being that like, the line in the center being up, down, left, right, or whatever. It doesn't really matter because it's just supposed to look like tightened bolts on there. So bingo, there's how that's going to look. Very happy with that. Now some people put these on later because they don't want to paint them. They just want to keep them silver like that. I'm going to paint over them so I don't really care. Uh, that's why I'm putting them on now, obviously before painting. I'm going to repeat this for the other side then as well. But our photo etch adventures are not done yet because we're also going to use this here from Idola. These are the Three Sheeps Design Blade Antenna is what this one is called here. So these are just little parts. What you do is you'll just stick down the little base part there. You can see it has a tiny hole in there. Drill down through that hole and then you can take your fin part and just stick it right down into there and it works really simply. Well, at least it should. Anyway, as you can see, I haven't used this yet, so I'm anxious to give this a try. Now where we're going to use this is on top of the binders that are attached up on top of the shoulders. Only, not the ones that are attached onto the side of the hip because a little fin sticking out on those is just gonna crash into the arm and they're probably just gonna break off or something, so. Uh, we're gonna put these here. This is the blue part that is on the outside of the binders on the top of the shoulders. And in this flat little section inside here, so we're gonna stick our fin detail up right inside there. So first, it's supposed to be helpful to maybe just to get that dust out of there so you can see what we're doing a little bit better. So with this one as well, I've just dropped a tiny little bit of super glue onto the back of this part and then they carefully put it onto here and try to do this as best as I can on camera, but I'll also need to see what I'm doing here. Just press that down so that it's straight inside there. All right, and then that's there for the time being. I'm gonna set that down, let the super glue dry uh, for a while, just so uh, then we can drill the hole and set in the fin. And so then the next thing we're gonna do is back to the legs here. The, here on the back of the leg, there's this kind of big gap there where you just, it's just between these two plates of armor and then you just see down all the way down into there, into the frame. And so I thought, why not fill that? And that also will give me a good chance to try out some of these parts that I've had lying around and I haven't had a chance to use them yet. These are DUA option parts. These are 3D printed option parts. They make a bunch. I've got a handful of them here. Uh, some more just like circular detail parts here and these are just some like thruster nozzle details and just little hooks the details there so uh, I'm gonna use these these are just some vent details uh, number 19 to add these vents inside of there so that you can see that then through the leg so I'm just gonna cut one of these guys off of here and then stick it to the frame down inside of there so it's up inside there. So this one I've already got the armor parts off the leg and I drew a line in there to mark where it needs to be above so it doesn't interfere with those armor parts. Take this off here and I'm just gonna sand the back side of that so that it's nice and smooth. And I'm gonna assume that modeling cement will work for this but actually I'm not sure so we're gonna find out. Uh, so just lay some cement down on here. So there we go, there's how that's gonna look. Uh, added one vent also up here at the top of the back of the thigh there. So got a little vent action there on the back of the legs. You can see there with and without, just a little bit of extra detail. It's standing out now, like it's really popping out just cause of the light color, but once it's painted in like the same color as the rest of the frame, it's gonna blend in I think really nicely for a little bit extra detail and just to fill in those kind of a little bit more empty areas of the frame. So basically now that I've got a proper mess going, uh, basically the last thing that I wanna do is I'm just gonna go through and actually use the uh, spin mold a little bit more, just the one millimeter, the smallest size hole. And I do actually want to add some more holes around here on this. So just 
some small rivet, kind of rivet hole, bolt holes, whatever, I don't know, whatever we want to call them, on some of the armor plates, just to add just a little bit of detail on there, but again, don't want to add a bunch of circles everywhere, but just some small little holes, I think will be some nice little details on some parts. So I'm gonna go around on the kit and just add a bunch of these, and then that's pretty much it. We can start uh, just getting everything all washed up and uh, get our colors selected. So I think in the next video, we'll go over the painting of this guy, because at the moment, I haven't decided on a specific color scheme for it. So I'm gonna think some more on that, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.